I, I want to be outrageous. I think that the problem is, is that when you've lost your ability to dream, when you're told what you can't do, you know, something bad happens. Uh, nobody's searching for a fraction for pi because you've been told it's not possible to find one. So that's good, you don't waste your lives. But when somebody tells you, look up at the night sky, try to imagine all the amazing things and you're never getting there, it's incredibly frustrating. I don't understand why we aren't taking these things more seriously. Look, there are topological and geometric ways of considering wormholes and you have to get the matter right and the pressures so that the thing doesn't close up and maybe it's impossible, whatever. Why are you wasting your time on a wormhole? What is it with all of you that you want to stay responsible and in the scientific Einsteinian paradigm, and yet clearly you've got science fiction hearts, you're, you're pining after Jodie Foster, you're, you're forcing Kip, For Kip Thorne and Carl Sagan to be somewhat mathematically realistic when consulting to these films. At some level, get out of Einstein's prison and explore the idea of the theory beyond Einstein that renders Einstein effective. Don't stay in the prison and daydream about freedom. The door is open. It's yours to leave. Einstein's the theory is incredibly well tested in the solar system. Um, to, it's been tested by looking at the way particles move, uh, planets move, satellites move. But far more important, uh, Kip Thorne, that was just mentioned, won the Nobel Prize for his incredible work in building these gravitational wave detectors. And Einstein's theory predicted gravitational wave detectors. It predicted the black holes would exist, that they would circle each other, they would give off gravitational waves. All of that has been proven to be true in the last three or four years, which is why no Kip Thorne was awarded the Nobel Prize. So let's stick with the theory, which is incredibly well tested, <laughs> until there's a reason to say it is not the way things are. So I just want to take a poll. Does anyone want to see three people agree for a debate? <laughs> 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 All right. In that case, even though we're old friends, George, George, George. <laughs> <laughs> the situation is different than you say. It used to be we got to have fun. Girdle had, you could put together a universe with closed time-like curves that would allow us to go backwards in time. Did not Herman Bondi in 1957 at the famous Chapel Hill conference talk about the issue of negative mass and general relativity? I sort of say that he did. And the reason <laughs> that he did was is that the negative mass is still attracted to the positive mass in the same way, but the positive mass is the one repelled. The two of them chase each other towards unbounded acceleration. That at least is exciting, sir. Stay in your chair. <laughs> George, George, is it not true that you of all people have to recognize that the Einstein field equations are made from some pure geometry, whereas the energy conditions are brought in to keep us from madness, to prop up what would otherwise fall apart as a theory with toothpicks and, 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 and masking tape? I submit to you, sir, that in fact the entire thing is on very shaky ground and you are trying to keep us in a Potemkin village. What say you? <laughs> I say if you could do it, you would be able to get eternal motion going. You'd make your fortune, you'd get your Nobel Prize. Which is what really matters to physicists. <laughs> well, but, but my claim isn't that this is possible, but my claim is, is that when we do not allow ourselves to go into the adaptive valley of madness, we have no possibility of getting out the other side at a higher level. If had Dirac stopped, with numbers where A times B was equal to negative B times A. There aren't numbers that do that. And if he'd stopped there, we wouldn't have the Dirac equation. But he later realized that it had to be matrices. So my question isn't that what we are saying here makes sense, but that we have to enter some kind of a state where we suspend the very strong strictures on reason and, and logic and consistency that you would have us uh, you would impose upon us so that we may discover what this is actually meant to be. So I, I want to <laughs> respond to Eric wanting us to open our minds to all possibilities. And again, I'm going to go to an economic a a analogy. And I've talked about if the energy density plus the pressure is negative, all sorts of things go wrong. The economic analogy is I can run a simulation on a computer where the interest rate is negative. And the more money I put in, the more money I make. That actually money can happen. Money comes out of nowhere, and that's an exact analogy. Just the way the gecko climbs <laughs> the wall using the Casimir effect with negative pressure and negative, negative energy, so do negative interest rates actually occur. And we have things like Giffen goods. <laughs> and I put it to you, sir, that we consider those things inside of economics. <coughs> it's time to let different voices 
be as irresponsible as the other voices. Remember, irresponsibility is the hallmark of great science. It is a byproduct. Watson and Crick and Pauling both came up with the triple helix with the sugar phosphate b backbone in the inside before Watson and Crick figured it was a double helix with, the, with it on the outside. You have to let people be wrong. You have to let people dream. And you cannot keep shutting people down uh, just because they've uh, failed to do something within the theory. All of our old people, Feynman showed up at the 1957 co uh, conference under the pseudonym, I believe, Mr. Smith. Uh, quantum gravity was founded by two anti-gravity uh, benefactors named Babson and Bainson. Nobody talks about this. Modern quantum gravity is an outgrowth of the anti-gravity movement of the 50s. You have to let people go to Esalen. You have to let them lie in uh, sensory deprivation tanks, take some psychedelics, talk some absolute madness, and stop pretending that we're so respectable. And you can't let one community dominate everything. It's time to party, rock and roll, have a <laughs> great time, be much more irresponsible, and try to generate new ideas rather than recycling the same seven ideas like wormholes that we've been discussing to death. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.